D-A. Speaking of medicine with Dr. Anthony Napoleon is coming up following news. From the show, WSBA's daily discussion of issues and concerns of importance from the fields of education, medicine, the law, politics, sports, and the community. Now, here's the host of WSBA's Speaking Of, Mike Sigman. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome to Speaking Of for this Thursday, May the 3rd, 2007. We are speaking of medicine, brought to you in part by the Timberville Drugstore. Count on the Timberville Drugstore to take care of you like a good neighbor would on Main Street in Timberville. We're very pleased to have our special guest this evening, Dr. Anthony Napoleon. He graduated from Indiana University with honors in psychology from Indiana's prestigious College of Arts and Sciences. He completed work on his Ph.D. at USIU in San Diego, California. He is a licensed clinical psychologist in California with a board certification in medical psychology. He joins us this evening live from California, and uh, we are going to be talking about the Virginia Tech killer. Our phone lines are open at 433-9782, 1-800-388-9782. Dr. Anthony Napoleon, welcome to Speaking Of. It's great to have you with us. It's nice to be on the show, Mike. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and the bare bones I gave, if you would. A medical psychologist um, is an individual, after completing their uh, clinical psychology work, develops an expertise in the relationship between uh, brain and behavior. And we will typically do an internship in a hospital setting and then also a residency in a medical specialty. Mine was plastic surgery because I had a particular interest in visual image and the impact on brain chemistry as well as psychology related to visual image. Cho sung Wee is, you know, watching the video of him is maybe one of the most frightening things I've ever seen. When a professional like yourself sees uh, someone like that on tape, what do you think of? I'll tell you what I personally think of. The first study I ever did, a study entitled Red Tagging Children at Risk. And what we would do, Mike, is we would go into schools and we would look at five-year-olds, and we would watch them with the design purpose to identify who would be at risk to engage in any number of troublesome behaviors, including the behaviors demonstrated by Cho. Um, It was a very noble study because what we wanted to do was we wanted to put teeth into the old notion An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It was disturbing for me personally because I I thought and some of the others also believed that we in fact could identify children who were at risk by watching their behavior. What we were confronted with, however, is that society as a whole, bureaucracies, the criminal justice system, the mental health system, was ill-prepared to be able to take the advisory, our red-tagging kids at risk before they did something bad, and put them into a system where they could receive treatment and intervention or just plain old-fashioned stopping them from engaging in this behavior. And there was a frustration. So whenever I see someone like Joe... I think of that red tagging study and I think about the frustration that we faced and it seems as though, although we've made some advances, we certainly have more advances, the mechanisms in place to stop this are not there and that's very frustrating. Well, the PC police prevent most of, uh, most of anything like you know, red tagging. I agree I mean, with you. I mean, that's what happens. I agree with you. One cannot exercise common sense, although let's remember and and give credit where it's due. The English professor professor at Virginia Tech who did her job, she red-tagged. 
she saw an individual. She went to the police. She identified, and then the system let her and the rest of the students and their families down. And I think there is a PC component to this. I think it's a tremendous insight on your part to identify it. We we are unable to come out and simply say this is an individual who needs help or and or an intervention. This person is at risk, but we always give the benefit of the doubt and are pushing mud up a hill, so to speak, if we, if we want to target a priori before it happens. But there were we, people there, smart people who did it. We're about 150 miles or so from Virginia Tech here in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, one of the reasons I wanted you on the program. There is, you know, still a lot of a lot of anger, a lot of pain, as much as anything else. A question that that I wonder about is is why we are seeing so many disengaged males, young males. Is it something chemical? Is it something to do with the the chromosomes? Why is it? It seems we get these young males that seem so disenfranchised. It is a nature and it is a nurture issue. 